very liberal pastor about a quarter of a mile from here preached a sermon a few years ago called Have the Fundamentalist One. And he was referring to people like me. And I took him out to lunch. And at the end of the lunch, I said, I don't see how you can call yourself a Christian because of what he had denied at Baker Square. And he was very indignant about that because he's pastor of the biggest congregational church in the state, probably. And, and uh, said, my, my church is the most liberal church in the most liberal denomination in America. So my father dealt with that from his earliest day. It was titanic. You may not be able to feel it. He wrote, Christianity is in the throes of a gigantic conflict with the enemies of the Lord. The followers of Satan have shown their colors and the faith is being blatantly denied and rejected. Corruption and disintegration have begun in a dozen denominations where the enemy has spread his deadly poison. The breach between modernism and fundamentalism keep getting wider and wider. The faith once for all delivered to the saints has been shunned in favor of bloodless faith that glorifies man, denies the depravity, rejects the absolute authority of the Bible and the deity of Jesus Christ. By the time my father was ten, almost everybody agreed the modernists had won. That is, all the mainline denominations were in their control. Then the question became, how do Christians, that is, orthodox, historic Christians, relate to those churches and that leadership. And the meaning of the word fundamentalism altered. Up until then, fundamentalism meant historic, orthodox Christianity. G. J. Gresham Machen, Bill Piper. But when the decisions had to be made stay, go, associate with, don't associate with, one band in that larger band of historic Orthodox Christians became more separatistic. And that's the way we think about fundamentalism today. The Bob Jones universities of the world. My father embraced that move. He was defined by that move up to a point. Enter paradoxes. For him, the heart of fundamentalism was true doctrine. His passion was evangelism. Saving, perishing people from hell. He really believed in hell. Changes everything if you believe in hell. Everything. And he did. By leading them to a divine, divine deity of Christ, Savior, substitutionary atonement, faithfully recorded in the Bible, inspiration of the Word, having done miracles, the miraculous, who will come again to judge the quick and the dead, second coming bodily. Everything in my Father's ministry is destroyed if liberalism is true, if modernism is true, that these fundamental doctrines are not so. For evangelism, he was a fighter. I hope you don't scoff at fundamentalism. Listen to what he said. Though fundamentalists do not agree upon every point of doctrine, they are definitely agreed upon the essential elements of the Christian faith. The total depravity of man, the absolute deity of Christ, the vicarious substitutionary atonement for sin through the blood of Christ, the bodily resurrection, the need for the new birth, and the blessed return of Christ to earth. That was my father's message. It was his life. Those truths right there. I hope they're yours. Another dimension of fundamentalism besides the doctrine Another dimension that, that he embraced 
besides the doctrine, was authoritative preaching, willing to name evil and defend truth. Quote, Too many present-day pulpiteers are soft-peddling the gospel. Even many who are robed in the vestments of fundamentalism are void of a semblance of holy boldness in their preaching. They handle sin with kid gloves, avoid great issues, and shrink from declaring cardinal doctrines. Pussyfooters in the pulpit. What a tragedy. They are a blight to the church and a blockade to the Holy Spirit's blessing. God wants trumpets in the pulpit, not violins. Trumpets that sound the reveille and warn of judgment to come. The tabooing of negative preaching has taken the fire and brimstone out of the pulpit, dried the tears of repentance, kept the altars empty. I would not for a moment minimize the effectiveness of positive proclamation of the glorious transforming God of Christ. It is my contention, however, that the sledgehammer preachers of yesterday were not entirely wrong and that a balanced middle-of-the-road position must be taken. And a third piece of the fundamentalist vision that he embraced was the doctrine of separation, not just from false doctrine, but from all forms of worldliness. Anything that would weaken or cloud or obscure the boldness and the spiritual power of your testimony for Jesus. Quote, Every Christian who indulges in the sinful pleasures of this world is a compromiser and a stumbling block. No dancing, theater going, card playing, gambling Christian can hope to be a soul winner or have a testimony for God. If men see this world in you, you will never point them to the next. Hmm. I grew up in a home where it was assumed we wouldn't smoke, we wouldn't drink, we wouldn't gamble, we wouldn't play cards, we wouldn't dance, and we wouldn't go to movies. We were fundamentalists. So why, Piper, didn't you kick against this growing up? I have never not as a teenager, a college student, a seminary student, a teacher or a pastor, ever thought ill of my parents for these standards. Ever. When I was in my early 20s, I went to Fuller Seminary, which was New Evangelical, they called it in those days. Which meant it wasn't fundamentalist. And I was indignant when certain young faculty members were cynical and snide and sarcastic about fundamentalism. They sounded to me like adolescents who were angry with their parents and their backgrounds and could never seem to grow up. I could name them. You wouldn't know the names. They, they didn't go very far. When, you, when you're a mean-spirited, angry young man, you don't lead people very well. I never felt that way about my parents. Agree or disagree wasn't the issue. I just never felt resentful about it. Why? I'm kind of normal. I just struggled with a lot of sins. Why? I think I know the answer. My mother and my father were the happiest people I have ever known. It strikes me as an incongruity and a, or this strikes many as an incongruity and a paradox. I think it's the key to their family life and I think it's a key to their influence. My father's power. Fundamentalist forcefulness in the pulpit, hammering away at sin, calling evil, evil. Fundamentalist vision of the razor-sharp edge of truth. That's a phrase from one of my father's sermons. The razor-sharp edge of truth. Fundamentalist standards that move from the Ten Commandments down to dancing and card playing. All of that was enveloped in a world of joy and freedom. 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 